We said to each other, oh, look, let's open the ride up. If you've got any mates that want to come along, just bring them along. Yep, it's about right. Never have I met two grumpy, I just got another mention from Jesse Coyle on his story. That's about the best thing that's happened to me today. The two of us are grumping along, complaining about our backs, everything. The good thing is we're blaming the booster. That's, that's our blame. Full vax, full vax supporters, but uh, it's not great for your first day of the festive five. I'm also carrying a couple extra Christmas kilos. <laughs> Pre-Christmas, pre-Christmas. Yeah, one of those days. The only other bit of good news is she's downwind home. True. We're gonna get a brew and I've, uh, I wanna have a quick chat about the Zwift Academy. I'll pretend that I watched some of it. Yeah, so lots of people were asking about the Zwift Academy in the last few videos, uh, my opinion on it. Don't you have to watch it? Yeah, so I should probably tell you that I haven't watched a second of it. There's a reason for that. I knew the result a long time ago. I uh, had to obviously sign non-disclosure stuff with Zwift and obviously subsequently spoke to uh, Sam and Cooper quite a bit about the whole experience. So it didn't really see much point in view. Maybe I'll watch it over Christmas and New Year's. But, yeah, uh, he's done a video on it. He's actually watched it, worth checking out. Um, but what I wanted to quickly say is, so you guys know that Cooper came with us down to Ginderwine and that was literally hours after getting back from Spain and <clears throat> suffering like what was a pretty devastating experience in the end for him. Like, let's be honest, it was. You wouldn't have known. Like, the guy was literally... It was basically a swan year for the two of us, which is a joke because the two of us were slopping around like bloody hubbards and he's cleaning our bikes and like doing all this kind of stuff. So I just wanted to say that because not only did he let anything on in the videos and all that kind of stuff, but he was just an outstanding gent of a guy. I can also say like they definitely picked the right, even though they're picking it off the ability, they picked the right personalities. Like none of the guys, mm. no, that's like heartbreaking for them. And none of them were, were, were bitter or I was, was surprisingly positive, both of them. So it's just pretty, yeah. Yeah. And like they're set up a really good relationship with Alex. They're good mates. There's no like hard feelings between them. I have spoken to Jay a bit about it subsequently. Uh, he was really surprised with, well not surprised, but he was taken back by how much of a reality TV show experience it was compared to what he had. His experience was very much, you do the workouts, you do the numbers, you do the rides, you do the races, here's the result. Whereas that was all those things and a reality TV show. So yeah, guys, this uh, this will be an interesting little festive 500 period. Don't really have much planned. I'm hoping to do some off-road stuff at some point. I do want to maybe chat about like some of the highs and lows product-wise that we kind of used, saw, little trends and things we can kind of potentially have a bit of flashback to some of the Fashion Friday things and see if we think some of those trends will persist in 2022. But yeah, I think a lot of this will be in your hands. Like I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what we can chat about because hopefully there'll be a lot of this, doing this on Bikes and Bikes. I'm up to speed, ladies and gentlemen, I'm up to speed. Alex, deserved winner, no two ways about it. Lovely kid, I, I've never personally met the guy, but I know Leo spent a lot of time with him, as I said earlier on, the guys have all spent a heap of time with him. Lovely bloke, super talented, and uh, yeah, clearly this is not a comment at all about him as a guy, right? Hopefully he reaches out and we can maybe put him on the vlog at some point. Anyway. Three things, three things you need to, no, you don't need to know them, but three, I've got three things I want to tell you, all right? And I'm, I'm lifting the curtain a little bit on, on some stuff here. First thing is that Zwift Academy is wholly funded by Zwift and GCN, okay? So whilst the rider ends up on Alpes and Phoenix, essentially they're not 
they're not footing the bill for this. They're not footing the bill for the whole finals thing and they're not footing the bill for that rider for the upcoming season. Okay, that contract next year, Jay's contract this year was paid for by Zwift, all right? So that's the first thing you need to know about this. Now, how that plays out then in the finals and all that kind of stuff, I don't know. Second thing I wanna say is this, and Jesse alludes to this when, we, when he talks a bit about Alex going to the development team or the Conti team, which is 100% the best place for Alex to have gone this year. No, next year, sorry, 100%. No, no two ways about that. And look, the, the reason for that, Jesse alludes to it, is, is the roster stuff, but also is this, right? If he got put on that main roster, I guarantee you he would barely get a race start. It would be a complete wasted year, all right? And I know that because I was just basically talking to Jay every second week, and that was his experience. He got a start at Tour of Turkey because someone got sick. He went to Tour of Turkey, bossed it, and still couldn't really get much many rides after it, but he exceeded everyone's expert and look and he's superhuman like he is genuinely superhuman now as talented as alex is he's, he's not going to be at that level and more than the physical side of it the the being left completely alone for months on end in a in a totally separate country with no idea when you're racing next no idea when you're riding next but you've still got to train really hard like a pro in tough winter conditions when you've never been outside of you know queensland if the guy made it, wow. Jay is that character. Jay is mentally tough. He's fully focused. He's mature. He's got a wife who supports him mentally. You know, I mean, there's all that support structure with him that Alex wouldn't have. That. So I just need to say that first because I do think that him going on that particular squad is the best outcome. That's great that that's where he's ended up, but that's not what it said on the bill. That's not what was advertised here. What was advertised was a place on the pro team. And they haven't done that. So I don't know who made the decision ultimately, but they essentially just haven't lived up to what was advertised. And the last thing I'll say is, yeah, look, I was devastated for Sam and Cooper. I'm completely partisan in this, like totally lopsided in who I wanted the win, right? And the question that everyone keeps asking me is who do I think should have won? And this is where it gets murky because you're Alpes and Phoenix. All right, here we go. Here we go. You're Alpes and Phoenix and you're building a roster. You're building a team for 2022. All right. And you've got this reality TV show thing happening and you can choose one of them. And you put them all through different challenges and stuff. And there's this, okay, you've got Sam Hill. Best climber there. Best climber, best numbers. Better than everyone else at that. Right, where do we put him into our roster? Right, so he's more than, he's not gonna be a one day guy because he's not punchy, so he's more of a, you know, climbery type thing. Well, therefore he's a GC guy, but he's not a full out GC guy because we don't really do that. So is he domestic? Well, we're not sure about his bike handling. So where do, where do we, where does he get a race start? Where's, where's his, Niche in that 30 man squad. Okay, so let's let's say we're not gonna go for that guy. Who I'll put him up to. We go for Cooper. Okay? Cooper's got race now. You know, he's got a kick on him, his numbers aren't quite as good as like the, the pure Sam Hill guys. He's not quite the climber as that, but just you know, he get he's as good as all these guys on our team at the moment. But all the guys on our team at the moment have kind of got a bit more experience than him. And, and we know there's these other guys in Belgium, there's probably like 10 or 15 guys in Belgium at a similar level that we've been watching for longer on Conti teams and that kind of stuff. Do, do we take this guy? Okay, well, where, where's Cooper's next race start for Alpes and Phoenix Pro Team? Right, do we take him to, do we take him to Omloop? No, he's not gonna fit in that squad. Like, is he in the Matthew Vanderpool squad? No, not really. Well, he's in the GC team. Well, we, again, we don't really do the GC stuff. Like, we might do some one-week GC stuff with, with Jay, but we don't really know where that is just now. 
So has he got that in the legs? I don't know, I don't know. Okay, let's not go for him then. And clearly then, option C was the best. What I talked about in the beginning, they went for an incredibly talented, um, unpolished guy in Alex, which hopefully has an incredibly fantastic, successful career. So I can see the thinking of why they have gone that route. My two issues with it is, it's not what was on, what was not what was advertised. Let's let's be honest. And well, look, do they need to be more upfront about the selection process? You know, I wasn't whinging to you this time last year, was I? I was like saying, yeah, this is the best system ever. Jay's the winner. You know, Nero, blah blah blah. So look, that's my take on it. Obviously, massively disappointed for for Cooper and Sam. I know for a fact that all our guys will do it again next year. Now, so having said all that about it not being what's advertised and the selection process being a little bit murky, they're all gonna have another crack at it next year because, you know, look at the experience of those guys going over there and riding with the pros and experiencing that and getting a taste of it. You know, I think that's, a, that's an incredible experience that everyone will wanna have a crack with. All right, that's enough of Zwift for the rest of the year, all right? My story, my vlog. <laughs> this is my blog. Uh, yeah, look, Aaron's helped us out massively this year. Um, it's been weird. Like, obviously, Felicia helps me a good bit as well, but the shop, you just can't go to it. So he's had to, he had to close for like eight months or something. And like, mental. mental. And Aaron was able to help me out, built all the off-road stuff for us, has kind of solved problems for me as I've gone along. And we'll sit down and have a chat with him, hopefully, on day three or day four, Justin, I think. We can go through some of the highs and lows of Chris's maintenance issues this year. Because there's been a few. There's been a few. Much problem solved. Thank you, mate. Alrighty, haters gonna hate. You gotta do what you're gonna do. Guys, thanks again. We'll see you super soon. Uh, festive vlogs are up and running. I'm stoked. And uh, yeah, Christmas, all the rest of it. All the best to your friends, your family, and hopefully see you out on the road in the coming days. Peace, guys. I love now... So they're doing, they call them spice rolls, spice, spiced fruit rolls. <laughs> to most people, they'll be hot cross buns, but because it's not Easter, spiced fruit rolls. This is the festive 500 content you've come to love. <laughs> That's right. We're back. We're back.